Well, the roots of top four slam have probably started in the minds of a lot of people, street cars and stuff, you know what I'm saying? And you know, the days that I sort of, you know, they come over here and I heard about John over here with his blowing cars about the same time they had a blowing small block in mine. He had a blowing big block in, in Zap Trap. And then uh, John put the, put the Hemi in, in the Zap Trap and beat the up a bit more. And I, at the same time, I was sort of putting the Hemi into my car. As I said, he did beat me by a little. And, uh, you know, he started running like 218 mile an hour stuff. It was pretty stout, eh? That like, was unheard of in the world. So it was, you know, I suppose that's what really got me and a lot of other people real interested in knowing that it could be done. Door slam, we were already in the door slam scene over there. You know, the Wild Bunch in, on the East Coast, they were sort of travelling group of supercharged races. And, you know, I suppose it was inevitable that one day with the likes of Zapier and I suppose yourself and, you know, Cole Dunn and Les Wynn and all these fellas that were sort of stepping up the pace and starting to go faster and faster and faster, that uh, a lot of people were eventually going to want a championship bracket. And uh, that's what spawned Top Door Slam in Australia. And like I say, you know, it's real, it's a real, real sad for me that John's not out there running it, but uh, I know he will. I know he will be back. And, uh, you know, when I come over to WA, I can't say I'd see that smiling face because I haven't seen him smile yet. But I'd see that aggressive kid area with all the, the big giants there ripping the covers off and throwing the heads around. It's something that's real dear to me, and I do miss it over here. And uh, like Top Door Slammer now in Australia, I suppose, is, has the credibility of any, any Group 1 bracket in the country. And, you know, I suppose John needs a pat on the back for that, for, for his stability in the early days and putting up with a lot of the uh, political decisions that were made against us guys in the early days. And I think that may have even burnt John out in the long run. You know, Zap probably didn't want to continually put up with the harassment of a bracket that we wanted to be, but, I mean, don't take it as a criticism of, the, of Andrew or anyone like that. I'm just saying, you know, they had their own agenda. We had an agenda that we felt was important. And, uh, you know, John was a big part of it, and so was I, and so was a lot of people, you know, Gats. I mean, there's dozens and dozens of people, and now it is a championship bracket. As I said, it's attracting some very stout teams, and guys like ourselves need to be able to sit around and talk about old times because there might not be too many uh, fast, good times left in the Western Australian round of the Australian Top Door Slammer Championship and out on the track, Lindsay Murray. Bondi, this is an absolutely beautiful Commodore Ute. An awesome car. I don't think anyone else in Australia could have even imagined a Commodore Ute would look so good as a door slammer. And Lindsay's a very lucky man. He was going to race Robin Judd, qualify and put him against the awesome Studi Baker, but Judd broke the gearbox in the car on his last qualifying pass. Lindsay gets a solo. We'll see him in the next round. And uh, Dave Simpson with a wicked Falcon. So one for the Holden fans and one for the Ford fans. Dave Simpson was supposed to race Gary Phillips. Unfortunately, Phillips hasn't made the line. And this time out, Dave Simpson will take a good look at the tree and a good look at the track. Phillips is the Australian top alcohol champion. Very disappointed not to be racing in eliminations. Put a couple of big laps in, driving Peter Hamilton Statesman, but a uh, wheelie out the start line broke the wheelie bar mount at the differential. They're unable to fix it, and they won't risk a 3,000 horsepower car on the track without wheelie bars. Simpson with a good straight pass, Frank. Looking pretty good. Came out nice and easy. A 774 at 251 kilometres an hour. Queensland versus South Australia, and as you can see from the burnouts, it's a grudge race. Ford versus Chevy. Well, the Chevy got out first, got in the water and put the burnout down and let the big custom line follow. The Castrol custom line racing in the Castrol lane. Mr. King would be very, very happy to get a win right here. Michael King behind the wheel of the Cazzo. What a great shot inside the cockpit. And up alongside him in the 56 Bel Air, Dave Coop from South Australia. Dave Coops is very keen to do well at this round. He's raced here two meetings in a row, and he believes he has a racing good tune-up, and it looks it off the start line. The Bel Air is absolutely flying. A great tune-up in the clutch, and Coops gets the win with a 681. Well, wherever this guy goes around Australia, the fans just come to the tracks to see him. Victor Bray is in Western Australia, and Bondi, what a monster burnout. It's become his calling card. He uh, would say to you that if without the burnouts, drag racing wouldn't be anywhere near as exciting. He does them for the fans, but he also does them to get this car down the track fast. And if he can be top qualifier, if he can run the fastest lap, he is going to try. And a 6.28 is the national record, which he holds. He has just run a 6.54. Coming up on Marlowe's drag racing, coming at you, more door slammer action. Long.